Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have a special guest with me today. He's actually my fraternity brother, member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Florida State University, Mighty Mu Epsilon Chapter. I got Emmanuel Manny Charlemagne with me. Manny is a is a Muay Thai fighter, so he looks very nice, but he will fuck you up. <laughs> and I've seen video of him in, in training. I, he's he's gone and he's fought competitively. Um, he is a certified Muay Thai coach. He's been in it for a number of years. So when he watches fights, I watch it as a fan. I mean, I did do a little jujitsu. It didn't last very long. I got hurt, and I was like, I can't do this shit anymore. Like, nah, I know my limitations. <laughs> but Manny's, I mean, I don't know. What are you, you're younger than me. You're like, what, 36, 35? Well, on Monday, I'll be 36. There you go. Well, happy birthday, my brother. Thank um, you, thank so you. he's a little younger than me. So, you know, he still has that, that bounce and, and that, that <laughs> step to his step, whereas I have that. I need to lay down. But, yeah. Manny, Manny's a big fight fan, big, avid MMA, you know, UFC, any type of combat sport. We go back and forth texting during fights. Yep. Manny, welcome aboard to Combat Corner. I'm going to love to get your perspective. But before we start, thank you so much to everyone for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to pound that like button, subscribe, and share this video as we grow our combat sports segment of combat corner manny yeah ufc 310 Bilal muhammad yeah. according to rampage jackson is mr pull out he pulls <laughs> out of this fight I, I i feel bad for the guy you see his toe i mean he he really he has six or seven stitches in his toe needs a, a surgical procedure he cannot fight so the main event with Bilal muhammad and shot cock shot cock Rachmanov is now yep. off there are people that are crying for a interim belt, which I don't agree with. But the real question is, is our guy, I know one of your favorite, if not your <laughs> favorite fighter, and my, 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 my current favorite fighter, Alex Portan Pereira, is that man going to come and save the UFC's ass for the third time this year at UFC 310 on what? Six weeks notice? Yeah, and fight Mago, um, um, Ankalaev. Is that gonna? Ha- I mean, can you see that happening? Is, is, is that the well, you know, from what I'm hearing, uh, Ankalaev has several times denied uh, the the uh, offer to fight Pereira, right? So we don't even know if that's gonna happen yet. I don't know if Ankalaev is looking for a big, massive payday or if the man is just straight up scared. Um, everybody talks about Ankalaev's wrestling. Um, you know, me personally, like. I think Uncle Live's a striker. If you look at his last few fights, uh, he stood up, he stood up, and he stood up, and he fought, and he he fought by standing up. Uh, the man is is pretty good at switching stances. Uh, if you watch his fight, he starts off in a southpaw, and he does this front kick to the body a lot. And then once he opens up his his opponents with that front kick to the body, he'll fake that front kick and then load him load up a uh, you know overhand or some kind of cross uh, combo there, but Regardless of that technicalities, Uncle Ayev likes to stand up and fight. Nobody wants to stand up and fight against Alex Pereira, okay? Everybody who said that they wanted to do it, abandon whatever game plan that they had before, whatever, yeah, I'm gonna stand up with this guy, yeah, I'm gonna stand up with this guy, it never fares well. Uncle Ayev probably sees this shit and is like, fuck that, you know? You gotta pay me a lot of money to go and do this or else I ain't gonna do it. I don't think Uncle Live is 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 in the mindset to try and take him down. If he fights, he's going to stand up with him and he's going to lose. Uncle Live was tested against um, who was his last fight? Uh, Alexander Rockage, like two weeks ago. Rockage, yeah, right. Um, and leg hit leg kick after leg kick, and you can see Uncle Live's legs were pretty compromised, right? And what does Alex Pereira do when he first gets in the ring? He's going to tear up them legs. Uncle Live don't want that smoke. I'm, I'm telling you. Now, with that said, like, what are the options to save 310, right? Is Dana White really going to let Alex Pereira save the day again? What does that mean in terms of the UFC? What does that, you know, what does that say? 
Dana White's a big John Jones fan. He he calls John Jones, you know, the greatest of all time. If Alex Pereira comes in here, saves the day, defends his championship again, what are people going to start saying? Greatest people of all time. Are gonna, Dana White does not want that. Those are two reasons right there why I don't think Alex will come in and save the day. Uncle Ive doesn't want it. And honestly, I don't know if Dana wants him to come in there and, and, and start being called the GOAT before John Jones, uh, you know, rides off into the sunset, you know, for his, oh, but this is after 309, this so this is 310. Yeah, so yeah. this is 310. So shortly after John Jones rides off into the sunset, we're going to have a new GOAT right away. Dana White don't want that, okay? So for those two reasons, that's why I started brainstorming on what are the alternatives, right? Interim championship. We don't want to, I don't know. You don't seem to want to talk about that, but let me pause right there and let I'll you talk about you know, it. Res- I'll talk about <laughs> it. Let, let me pause and see what your response is to the two points that I made, that I brought up. No, I think it's, I think they're very interesting points because I, I do agree with you. I find it interesting how they talk about Magomed and Goliath's wrestling when all I see him do is strike. Like mm-hmm. every fight I've watched him fight, except for Jan Blakovich, who was kicking his ass for three rounds. And mm-hmm. then he decided to wrestle. Because he was getting his ass kicked. I mean, yep. he lost, that was, I thought he lost the fight. And, you know, mm-hmm. obviously the, 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 the last round was a 10-8 round. Or one of those rounds was a 10-8 round in that fight. But Blakovich beat him up for three rounds. And, and how did he beat he him up? Free, huh? Standing. How, with, what, what did Jan uh, uh, do? He tore up Uncle Live's legs. Yeah, he, yeah legs. Yeah, he, the legs. Yeah, he, he busted his legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, he, he whooped him standing. He busted his legs up. And it... It, it, when you when I watched that fight, obviously you're looking at from and I and I had a feeling that that fight would be a draw at the end because I figured they would give a 10-8 round. Although I am not the 10-8 round type of person, <laughs> I think 10-8 rounds are ridiculous unless you absolutely pulverize somebody. And he didn't pulverize Jan Blakovich; he was on top of him. Like mm-hmm, that wasn't mm-hmm. a that wasn't some brutal beatdown. Like like if if you told me that in round five, Jan Blakovich looked like Khalil Roundtree. Mm-hmm. In round four against Pereira, then I'd say, oh, 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 okay, there was some su- significant damage done. That's a dominant ass beating in that round. But it wasn't. It was just you were on top. You never really, really went, to to me at least, to try to finish the fight. Not the way I would think a guy would want. But I, that's just my feeling. I, I, if I'm remembering it correctly, I don't remember him really going for it to get – you know, Blakovich, you know, Jan out of there. Um, and they never rematched that fight on nope. top of it, which I think was ridiculous that that rematch never happened. How can you have these two guys have a draw for the belt? <laughs> so now you have no, you still have no one with the belt. Then Jamal Hill ends up with the belt, right? Or whatever, you know, he ends up with the belt or whatever the hell happened. If I remember, my, my brain is, is mush, but. I just thought that that rematch should have happened. And who has Ankalaya fought? I know he's fought a bunch of good dudes. And I thought Rockets gave him trouble. I don't think that was an easy win. He then mm-hmm. said, oh, he was running away from me, which I do think if Rockets had been more forward, more, more in a forward motion, he might have gotten that win because I thought that fight was close. I didn't think it was some wipeout. Um, while I think the UFC commentators are cheerleaders half the damn time. They kind of tell you who they want to win and when and what they say. I have to watch a lot of it without volume at times because it just it gets insufferable. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I think he's a stand up guy, and then all of a sudden they're gonna say, "Well, he's gonna wrestle." He's gonna go, really? I don't see it. I don't know where that like, wrestling is coming gonna, from. All of a sudden, become a wrestler. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something. If he waits three rounds, there won't be a three rounds. Mm-hmm. He'd have to. He'd have to start wrestling in the first sixty seconds. Because that to me would be the best time to start wrestling when they're still dry and you can still, you know, because Khalil Roundtree, that's the one guy that I got. I mean, my God, I thought he would get knocked out in the first round based on what he said he was going to do. I was wrong. He lasted four. (laughs) He's very, very agile. Um, He was moving really, 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 really well. And then on top of that, we found out that Pereira almost dropped out of the fight because he was sick as a dog. Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking savage, man. I mean, like, he's risking his title, sick as a dog, to save this fucking company again. Because can you imagine they run in there with Pena, Pennington Pena as a main oh, event? Gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. And that fight, I thought that fight was pretty good, but 
that's not the fight you want to sell a pay-per-view on. I mean, it might draw yeah. 50,000 buys. You know, it might draw what Francis Ngannou drew in that PFL disaster. Did you see that nonsense? Uh, yeah, I, I did. Oh, I did. Uh, Lord he have ducked, mercy. Uh, he just ducked a hook and then took him down Bro. and then... Uh, <laughs> and, and, and then punched him in the back of the head five times and they didn't and, say shit. Yeah. <laughs> he punched him in the back of the... He punched him square in the back of the head five times and they didn't say shit. I was like, wait. A few were on the ear and then it just was straight down. Boom. Yeah, 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 he knocked his ass out, but yeah. um, but nobody watched. I watched it, but nobody, nobody paid for it. <laughs> no, so, no, I mean, um, uh, it wasn't worth it. Even though I wish I did, I, I, I kind of wish I um watched the cyborg fight. Uh, that was a good. I, that was, I mean, that was a good fight. I, I, I yeah. I'm a big fan of cyborg. Always will be. Me but too. That was there, there. That PFL thing was 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 messy, and it's never. Yeah, they need to get stop trying to be a paper. Don't do pay per view, guys. Like, stop. no recommendation. Stick to ESPN. Stick to being free. Like sell ad 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 on t ads on TV. The pay per view model only works for the UFC. Everyone else needs to stop doing it, except for the UFC when it comes to this in combat sports. And then of course some Canelo fights and other boxing matches. But yeah, I I, yeah. I would love to see Ankalaev do it mm -hmm. because he's talked a lot of shit about it. And yeah. Pereira has put a tweet out already. With a phone on there, yeah, <laughs> you know, so, so he's he's ready. Obviously, he's willing to do it. He, he's he's that dude. I mean, but if you think about it, also like who who else is available, right? I mean, Alex cleared out the division. Um, Yuri, Jamal, Jan. Uh, well, he hasn't you, fought Rockets yet, but I mean, uh, he's way guy, down that there. Guy loses every, that guy loses every fight that would get him there. Exactly. Rocket, so yeah. Honestly, Ankalaev is the only one, you know, who who merits this match and and who who's you know worth it. But uh, one thing I also wanted to know is like, what what do you think? Like, do you think the fans are starting to have um, a little bit of Pereira fatigue? I mean, I'm a fan. I love watching Pereira fight all the time. But you know, four times in uh, in a row. Like, what are your thoughts there? You, you, you know, um, if they do, it's because it's it's the UFC's fault. And I don't because I love Pereira. I love, I mean, I love what he how he comes to fight. I, I know that I'm not gonna get some I don't have a problem with wrestlers. I have mm -hmm. a problem when wrestlers just wrestle and don't try to win fights. And I'm gonna yeah. sound like a fucking I'm gonna sound like a fucking hypocrite because I love Kobe Covington. Yeah. That's <laughs> and he never tries to and he never tries to finish a fight. I just love Kobe Covington for the shit he talks the same way. I loved Chael Sonnen. Chael Son, but but Chael Sonnen tried to not. He dropped. He dropped people. You know, he couldn't, yeah. he couldn't punch, but somehow he dropped Anderson Silva. You know, a, yeah, a he couple did. times, and, and um, you know, so I, I I do, you know that. So that makes me a little bit a little bit of a hypocrite. I just like the way they shit talk. And and, and while I wasn't a Conor McGregor fan, you have to respect it. Like, dude's gonna come out here and he's gonna throw. Like, he's not gonna yeah. hear wrestle. He wants yeah, to throw yeah. fucking hands. And um. I would, I, if people have fatigue from it, you know what? Blame Dana White because he's allowed this entire organization to, in a sense, it's not the same as it was. This, this, this circus um, or in the heavyweight division with John Jones and Stephen Miocic is, <laughs> is a joke. I don't even yeah, care yeah. to watch the fight, but I'm going to, I'm obviously going to watch it, but I couldn't honestly care less about it. Yeah. It, it, it's irrelevant to me because. Whoever wins, it doesn't matter. They're both going to retire. They're not yeah, going to fight yeah. again. Because I mean, Tom and Stipe has been out for, for how long? For four <laughs> fucking years. Like, you're going to give <laughs> a guy on. who ain't fought, who's coming off of a knockout loss, mm -hmm. a title shot, and he ain't fought in four years. And the reality is Tom Aspinall will decapitate both of them. And then the, and weird, the weirdest thing is, like, you have – an interim champion and in a champion and they're not even competing to unify the belt. That's the, the I don't get that. Uh, that's but John then again, Jones being scared shitless of fucking Tom Aspinall. And that's the Dana White, you know, John Jones, like booty partner shit that they got going on. Like, I, I don't know, but I wanted to touch up on something. Um, remember, because I said like, what are the alternatives to, to saving 310? Um, um, you know, you look at you look at the welter rate. Like, if we okay, if we honestly considered a interim champion, right? Um, Kamaru is probably out of shape. Uh, Leon is probably scared. Um, you know what? 
I think you know what would sell is Colby Covington for an interim belt with um uh Rockmana uh Col- Col- whatever Col- his name is. Sell. Col- Colby will always sell, but Colby's on the card in um isn't isn't Kobe fighting? No, he's not fighting in. No, that's Chandler, that's Chandler and Oliveira. Yeah, that yeah. was the rumor was that Kobe would fight Ian Gary um in, in New York, and he's that's not happening. So yeah, I mean Kobe Covington would 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 be the one that could sell it because he has the mouth to sell it. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's the greatest move for him. I mean, I mean, um, he's probably he's probably gonna lose because uh, he didn't look too great in his last fight, awesome. and he was he looked- out of shape. He looked horrendous against Leon Edwards. I was shocked at how bad he looked in that fight. I, I was stunned how bad he looked. Like yeah. it was like, bro, who are you? Yeah, who, who yeah. are you? Did did Masvidal really knock you upside your head in the street? Like I don't know what happened, but you look that like wasn't the train. That, that wasn't the train. chaos that I know, um, for sure. And if he's in shape now, if he's in shape, yeah. Yeah, I think he can. I think he can win that fight and do exactly what I just mentioned: wrestle the fuck out of this dude and and. And and dominate. I think yeah. he can. He has that skill. I think Kamara Usman, um, the way he showed versus Kamzat Chimaev, mm-hmm. people want to just go give Kamzat a title shot. I think what he did with Robert Whitaker was hell of impressive. Obviously, yeah. Robert, I mean, to cr- he crushed his fucking jaw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that's you know what? That's mortifying. <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, people say like that he crushed it from pure force, but if you look, he did crank it a bit. So the momentum from yeah, that turn, uh, the yeah. momentum from that turn is probably what caused the break versus like just the sheer force of him pressing down on the jaw. People make it seem like he just pressed down on it and broke it, but it was like a, uh, an abrupt crank that sort of like, you know, moved the jaw in that direction that broke it. But still the man's fucking a freak of nature. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. he can strike too. Uh, he's not the greatest, but uh, he can he can stand and bang a little bit, uh, which is which is interesting. So I, I um, thought he lost. I thought he lost to Gilbert Burns. I thought he lost me too. the fight. Me and too. I thought uh, and I thought that if Kamar the fight with Kamar Usman was a five round fight, oh yeah, Usman would have won that fight 48 47 because he was gassed the fuck out and Usman dominated round three. So yeah, Usman I, took I, a little too long to wake up though. It, it, um, well, yeah, because he came, he took the fight on like a week notice. Oh, that's like, right. He that's took right. that fight on a week's notice. He was completely out of shape. No matter what he says, like I'm always in shape. And, and, you're in shape for <laughs> me. Like you're in shape for <laughs> yeah. normal everyday human. Yeah. You're not in. I'm gonna fight this destroyer mm. who is gonna relentlessly pressure on wrestling. And and I mean, you're not in wrestling. You're not even in wrestling shape, bro. And mm-hmm. I give him mad respect and props for that because he took that fight on seven was a seven to ten days notice, flies across the world. I mean, goes in and weighs at 185. He's not really an 85 fighter, he's a 70 fighter. I mean, no matter what he yeah. says. And and he goes in there and he I mean, when 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 Kamzat took him down, I was like, Oh my god. Yeah, but yeah, but we also because I saw the Gilbert Burns fight and it was like it wasn't even that easy. So Mm-mm. uh, however, he recovered. And then you see Kamzat, he's starting to get tired. Yeah. If you can drag Kamzat past round one, he gets tired. I was I was surprised that Whitaker got gave that takedown away so quickly. I, I yeah. It was disappointing to me because I want to see this guy legitimately challenged, and I I would not have a problem with an Usman um, Kamzat rematch before giving him a title shot and give Usman real training time. But at 170? And you make it a five-round fight. At 85. Oh, well, because... I mean, if you're going to do that, because they want to go give him the title... They want to go give... Oh, give him uh, Drickus du Plessis. Man, we both know Sean Strickland beat Drickus. We both know that he won that fight. Yeah, yeah. How many people does Sean Strickland have to beat to then earn his shot back? Because he already beat, was it, Paulo Costa? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. he already did that. Like, what does he got to do? Um, I but do think let's Usman. Say, Rock- let's yeah. say, let's say Usman does fight um, Hamza Shimaev, and Usman does win. Does that make him a one eighty five contender, though? I would say so. You think so? I mean, it, I was if it, if he beats him at eighty five. I mean, he's ranked third now, Shimaev. Yeah, it's just. Third now. I just feel like I mean, he he would he was he didn't really 
prove himself in the division yet. But then again, Alex, you know, went up to 205 and championship. And then shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Usman already <laughs> has been. And, and if, if you want to be real, Usman already has a win over Sean Strickland. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's, so, true. that's true. I mean, it's a long time ago, so I don't know if that'll be the same thing, but he does have yeah. that win. I, I think if he was to do that, he'd have his pick of whatever he wants. Although, look, Usman's getting older. His feet are not good. His feet are fucked up. Um, his, that I know for his, his Yeah, his, his legs are all fucked up. We all know this. This is well known to people. Um, but he's still a dog. And the, and the yeah. fact that he took that fight on a week, week, no, week and a half notice was was incredible to me. Um, but I think a fight with him and Shavkat Rachmanov, even though he's lost now with three in a row, if he wins, he's their number one contender at, at welterweight. Yeah, but he. So, I don't know if uh, Usman has time to get in shape for one seventy. I mean, he, uh, he would have. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Could he cut the weight? You know, five yeah, weeks, six weeks, or whatever it is. Um, I, I think I think the UFC once, has a problem. I heard him say once that he walks around one ninety five. Usman. But yeah, I mean, can't you cut that? I mean, you okay? You've done this before. Can't aren't these guys like conditioned to cutting twenty pounds in five weeks? Yeah, it, but each one of those deadly cuts, man, it takes something out of you. Every mm. time you do it, it takes something out of you. And as you said before, Usman, he ain't no young spring chicken, man. Uh, and the, a nasty cut like that may hinder his performance. Um, could he do it? Most likely. He's a professional. The guy is, is an absolute professional. He has the, the mind, discipline. He's like fucking David Goggins when it comes to dif- discipline. But, like, it's going to be one of those situations to where, like, the body is just going to be like, fuck this, you know. Um, but yeah, who, who else, right? If you go down the I'm thinking because Is- Islam's not going to fight. Islam no. Makachev's not fighting. Tuporia just fought. Um, who the hell's the 35? I mean, Marab's not fighting. No. Um, <laughs> you know, you do have the pun. See, this is where the UFC kills me. You got Pantoja fighting a guy that's never fought in the UFC. Like, that who is the level yeah. of desperation. Kai Asakura. Like, who where the is, fuck is yeah. Kai where, Asakura? And, and I'm, I'm supposed to know he, he's from, I think he's, he's from Japan. So, and he has. Where's Moreno? Show. Moreno obviously has fought and lost three times to Pantoja, so it's like it's hard for them to go hand him another title shot. Although I would, me too. I would, I would, because because you know you, you know Moreno's Moreno's gonna fight. Yeah, you know, and he's and he and he he's a fun dude, and he's gonna and he and he's tough and he's exciting and all that. You and I mean, I thought the fight with Pantoja was tremendously close. Um, and Pantoja wanted to wrestle. Fuck him. You know, yeah, because they he knew he couldn't stay on the feet with him. He couldn't stay on the feet with him anymore. Uh, who I tell you, it, this is the problem when you did this this heavyweight bullshit. Because the heavyweight division has basically stalled for a year. Yeah, it's been stalled yeah. for a year. You, you, you don't think Tom Aspinall would have already fought or been on the December card if he was defending a belt? Like, because he fought in what in, in July or end of June was it in in England? Um, yeah, the yeah the and, England you know, fight. So he would have fought probably around this about this November December card. I know they wanted to do the John Jones Stipe bullshit in in New York, um, but yeah, they have put up they they put themselves in a bad situation for here. Uh, you cannot make this a fucking interim title shot. That would be a dis- no. that would be a, that, that would be an embarrassment. The guy got hurt. He just won the belt. He's not, it's not been a year. It's been a few months. The fight was scheduled. He has a legitimate injury. He'll be back by March. Like, you can always do this fight in March if you really want to. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, fuck, you, there's not. Did Julian Pena, did, did, did Julian Pena hear? Um, you delay. Wait, I, I want to talk about that. Um, that injury. You, like, you gotta. Let's think about like what that means. Like, if you delay it to March, right? That and we're in, we're August. Uh, we're in November. Sorry, end of October. Uh, end November, of October. Yeah, we're November. Um, November. that's a long time. Um, I agree. For him to not have like defended the belt. Granted, the injury is serious. It's staff, and staff is yeah. fucking gross. Um. I mean, motherfucker should have taken a bath. 
that could be avoided. Like I, I've trained, I've trained, bro. I, I have trained in, in many different gyms and stuff and it's places that smell like feet, places that smell like roses, sweat all over the mat, dry, like, bro, I've never gotten staff. And all you got to do is just take a shower after training. I'm sorry, but like, do, do they staff, not bathe after shaving after training? <laughs> that, that, that's the only way for you to get staff. Like, literally, like, if you go home and do not shower, like, like go home i'd be in, i'd be in the locker room showering That's exactly exactly and then these guys got yeah. state-of-the-art facilities there's no no excuse to not take a shower after training like that's that's ridiculous so before a big major fight like that you're gonna go be dirty and, and 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 not take a shower put yourself at risk and now you just blew up the whole 310 card that's that's the thing. People will say, yeah, it's a legitimate injury. It is, and staff is dangerous, right? Like some people get can get mm-hmm. amputated and stuff like that. But it could be mm-hmm. prevented. It's not like he was in training and 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 he rolled his ankle or or you know busted his knee. This man did just didn't take precaution, and that's stupid. I'm sorry, yeah. like that's that's not an excuse. So now we're in this predicament to where like I don't know. The UFC is in a strange place right now. Um, the, you can't, the, you the, can't main you can't main event this card with Pantoja and Kai Asakura. You, you, you can't, but like the fact that Alex Pereira is your only option kind of says a little bit about the state of the UFC, in my opinion, right? Like yeah. UFC is supposed to be this big organization with the world's best fighters and da 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 da. Meanwhile, you got the same fucking guy saving the day three times and about to be four times in a row, like you got to start holding either your fighters or your promoters accountable. Um, you know, and then you know what the biggest barrier is for people competing fucking weight cuts. It's that's, oh, yeah. that's what it is. People don't want to cut weight. They're, they're training. They're all, they're training all year round. I don't have a doubt that these guys are in shape training, but they don't yeah. have the weight. And then that's a huge problem. It shouldn't be that people are not competing solely because of weight. UFC mm-hmm. needs to fix that. So let me ask you. So let, let me ask you from this perspective. When you, when you, and then we'll, we'll ask you as a question and a statement. You you mentioned who's responsible for this. I would I would say that's the matchmakers. I would say while they have a very tough job, the matchmakers are failing because mm-hmm. I think they failed going into UFC 300. That was yeah. a that was a matchmaking failure and a colossal catastrophe because. Because UFC 300 was a fucking horrendous card. Like, they can sit here and say what they want. They can put me in my video and my comments about how this is hot garbage, all that. It wasn't about the card itself. It was about you're building up something and saying it's the greatest thing on the face of the earth. This will be the biggest thing ever. And all you gave me was a bunch of washed up champions, former champions, who no one really cares about anymore. Like, do you really care about Cody Garbrandt anymore? No. Like, do you really care about uh, um, Jim Miller and, and 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 Bobby Green? I love Bobby Green. That's a great fight. It's a fun fight. Jim Miller's almost 100 years old. Like, we knew what was going to happen. Do you really care about some of these fights? Most of those fights, the only fight on that card that I thought was really a fight that I cared about, the best fight, was the was the fight with um, Yuri yeah. and uh, Rockage. That was the yeah, best yeah. fight of the night. That was the fight that actually had – something of substance and meaning to it beyond obviously the title fights or what have you but it was the fight that had the substance it was the fight that had meaning you're gonna get a number one contender from this fight you're not it's like the rest of this stuff is all is all bullshit like if i if i go back and i look at when you have max follow, fighting you know justin gates you for this bmf joke <laughs> of a belt i'm sorry folks it's a fucking gimmick and y'all all buy it, and y'all are all dumb. Like, but it I'm was sorry. fun to watch. It was fun it's to watch. It's fun to though. watch. And if it wasn't for the fact that Max Holloway was a fucking certified G and said, let's go right here, because he had won the fight. The fight was a dominating performance by Max Holloway. He whipped Justin Gaethje's ass. The fight yeah. itself was not anything unbelievable. It's when he said, right here. And then he gets the knockout of a lifetime. And now everyone's saying, oh, my God, it's the greatest fight ever. No, the fuck it wasn't. Oh, my <laughs> God, it's the greatest card. No, the fuck it wasn't. Oh, my God, they got all these Twitter views and, and Instagram posts. And 
social media and you, it was the most money. Yeah, because you charge people a fortune to go to it. No one said it wouldn't sell tickets, but it's like it, it's like you create this this it's a it's it's like mirrors and shit. And, and yeah, I knew what that card was. And obviously I'm an ass clown and I'm an asshole and all that <laughs> stuff because I, I gave an opinion on it. But that card itself. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill, like that's an insignificant fight to me. Like I yeah. knew what was going to happen. Like I said, he would knock him out inside of four minutes. And now Jamal Hill is going to carry to his grave. Oh my God, they didn't stop the fight for me to reset myself. Motherfucker, you punched him. It, you kicked him in the balls. In the nuts. You kicked <laughs> him in the nuts. Asking and for he the said, reset. And he said, oh, no, no, no. I'm the one that got the nut shot and you're the one asking for a reset. Bro, you got knocked fucking clean out, bro. You got your eyes were rolled to the back of your fucking head. Stop yeah. it. And you yeah. look, give him. I, I, I wouldn't be against him getting a rematch at in December. Show us what. Show us your balls, Jamal. Yeah, yeah. If Uncle Iab don't want it. Alex Pereira will gladly take out the trash again, and he'll do it probably faster. Yeah, but that probably won't sell. Um, people it saw won't, how because we know the reality. Like, 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 if we go through that card again, this is where I look at the the fact of these the the, the, the matchmakers like Jessica Andrade and Mar Mar Marina Rodri Rodriguez. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Jalen Turner and Moicano. That was, if not the dumbest fight I've ever seen from this from Turner. Like he gave that fight away. Um, Sadiq Youssef. Diego. Now Diego Lopez is becoming a certified G. He's a contender. He should uh, realistically, if you really want fireworks, that's the next fight for. Ilya Tuporia. It's not. Yeah. Not. It's it's Lopez. Yeah. Like those guys will throw hands. Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison. You threw a fucking geriatric <laughs> out there who clearly was well past anything, and she looked like it. Holly yeah. Cater, Aljo, Aljo backpacked this man for fucking three rounds. It wasn't yeah. entertaining. Again, Yuri. Now Aljo won the fight, but again, that I thought could be a good fight, but it was boring as hell. And then you look at the fact they put Bo Nickel on the main card. Like, you're offending me. I'm paying that's, for this. That's the only one I'm I I'm paying for with. this. Yeah. Bo Nickel? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, now the Oliveira Sarukia fight was a really good fight. I thought, you know, it, Oliveira kind of gave that shit away. Um, but again, like, Weili, Zhang Weili and Zhang Zhenan, like, that's a main event for China. Not, not oh. Vegas. <laughs> that's the main event for China. Like, how big would that be in China? Like, we have to geographically look at this shit as well. Because when you look at all, how many fighters do you really know when they do cards in Australia? Half these guys you've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's the whole idea around, you know, those international cards, right? Is to, you know, get their local fighters, you know, some. some did, you home, think, did you think Wei Li would, did you think there was any shot and shit that Zhang Wei Li was going to lose that fight? No. Uh, but but who who else? Uh, right. But that's uh, the, but that, that, that's that's the thing. Why they have to put Alex on this fight? Because nobody would have bought this thing with Whaley as the main event. In fact, they would have flip flopped this shit and made Gaethje and Max yeah. for a gimmick fake belt the main yeah, event. They, yeah, they they probably didn't want to do that for three hundred. So you know they had to have Alex jump in. But you know, and that's that, where that's, I blame that's... the matchmakers because there was a series of events. That led to this happening. The series wasn't of events. Wasn't 300 supposed to be? Wasn't that supposed to be Connor's return? It's supposed or to be Connor McGregor. That, yeah, it's yeah. Connor McGregor. I mean, that like, man ain't coming back. It was supposed to be John not. Jones. It was supposed to be John Jones. <laughs> there was supposed to be so many different guys, and all you've done, but but you need those because you had too many title fights on this card. The wrong guy fighting here. The wrong person fighting here. Like you made mistakes throughout that second half of 2023 and now you have no one able to fight yeah yeah and they did it again at 303 yep just blew his load and then the next thing you know there's nobody there's nobody available and, and, after and that. now we're here and now we're here again yeah yeah but you know that's that's just you know kind of the the precedent that they set for themselves right like you know they want to have all these big bad cards but they don't really have the roster to sustain that um, over a full year. Hence, you no, know, look, the look, issue. I want you to, I want you, to, I want you to listen to these next few. This weekend, tomorrow, you asked about Brandon Moreno. He's fighting tomorrow in Edmonton against Albasi. What the, um, 
Amir Albasi. So it's two versus three. Obviously, the winner of this fight should be the next contender for the belt. Yeah. Aaron Blanchfield versus Rose Namajunas. Derek Lewis versus Johanta, jo, Johanata Denise. No idea who that is. Kyle Machado versus Bred, Brenson Ribeiro. No idea who those guys are. Mark Andre Barriot versus Dustin Stolfus. Mike Malott versus Trevin Giles. Like this is an Edmund. This is a fight night card in Edmonton. Like this should be in the fucking apex, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah, next week. But this is this is where we go. See, this is why this is also a problem with they have too many damn cards. Like I yeah. love MMA, but there's too many cards. They put themselves in this position. Yep. They have. You, you want to know who's main eventing? There's a there's an apex card on this on the ninth. You know who the main event is? Ooh. Neil Magny. <laughs> like, with all respect, Neil Magny, like, come on now. I mean, Neil Number- Magny's not, he's not a bad fighter. He's, he's a pretty exciting striker to watch. Uh, but, he's, not an, um, he's not a main event fight on any card no, ever but, in the history of the UFC. See, but that's I, the I, thing, right? Like, some of these... Like some of these events, like the expectation should be that this is for like the rising stars, you know. Like, I agree. Um, it shouldn't be something that you stack or try to make like this big exciting event, um, especially since you're not pay per viewing them. But what I think they're trying to do is like, ha- like WWE, you know. Um, WWE has their weekly events. They have Raw's mm-hmm. War, SmackDown. I don't know what else or next. And then, and then you have the pay-per-views where you got the big stars, you know, the Undertakers, yeah. the Kurt Angle. Well, I don't know who the stars right not, Those guys are long gone, bro. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what the UFC is doing, but they don't, uh, trying to do. But I don't, like, I don't think they have the roster to fulfill that, you know, frequent of, you know, of, of, of fighting. Yeah, like, so, I don't know. You know the Maybe event, the, the, co-main, the co-main event on that card is Cody, Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> versus miles john oh gosh okay you see like see this is what i'm talking about like this this fight card shouldn't even be happening they're yeah. just putting a card together this is a card they threw together and then you get the john jones fight. Like, even the john jones card like with jones and stipe this card is not like oh. well like, you got nothing. you got charles Oliveira and michael chandler which should be an exciting name, one name 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 the next name another fight on that card without looking bo nickel Right? Isn't he fighting? Did you just did you, did you just look? Did you just look? No, and I remembered it. I remembered it from earlier because I looked fighting, earlier. He's fighting Paul Craig. Okay, he's fighting Paul Craig. So he's getting he's getting another main event. Um, Vivian Araju against Kareem Silva, and then wait, wait. This, so you said huh? wait, Bo Nickel is fighting in the prelims as the main event? No, main the main card. He's on the main card. Oh, main card, main card. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Bo, yeah, Bo remember we're, the, people are paying eighty five dollars to watch this. And that's yeah. my problem. You charge people 85 bucks. You want to know who the first fight is of the night in the main card? Chris Weidman. Yeah. <laughs> but Chris look. Weidman versus Eric Anders. Like, okay, but look, we got to set our I'm a Weidman fan. I'm a huge Weidman fan, but my God. But we got we to gotta set, we gotta set expectations, though, because, like, look, and if you look at boxing, right, you go to a Canelo fight. Yeah, it's, it's the same shit. The undercards are gonna suck, uh, and you know people are going there for the main event, uh, maybe a co-main event. But I don't think the expectation should be that each card is like super stacked. Um, in you know for the for the whole main card, they've only got eleven fights in this card. Or there's, three, uh, there's thirty. There's three early prelims. There's three prelims, and then there's five on the main card. There's only eleven fights in this card. So a Jeez. bunch of fights have clearly dropped off. So you're paying premium money for, to go watch this. And realistically, it's not it's not a great card. They need to reduce it, the price then. Make it 60 bucks. It's what it should have it should never have left that price. Like they keep jumping the price up our ass. And that's part of the issue. They keep 85 doing is that. too much. 85 it's too, is much. too much. Jim Miller's on this fight card. He's on the prelims against Damon Jackson. Like I just it, it's just one of those things where this is another example of. They have they the, the scheduling is messy and you know and that's where and quite frankly I'm gonna tell you right now I have no idea who's gonna win that John Jones Steve Bay fight because I don't think John C Rail gone was quit he quit um that was embarrassing and I just find this whole Dana White thing with Francis and Gano to be comical 
Yeah. Um, he, he was first. It was John Jones was afraid. Now it's that Francis is afraid. Like then, then that's like Francis never wanted to fight John Jones. John Jones is the greatest of all time. Look, I don't debate you. John Jones is the greatest of all time, except, except for the fact that I thought he lost to Dominic Reyes. Clearly, who's coming up? Who's lost. fighting soon? Yeah. yeah, he's fighting actually against. Um, he's fighting this weekend. He's fighting in the. He's, no, he's fighting on the next pay per view. He's um, fighting. I'm sorry. He's fighting December. He's fighting, he's fighting December. Three ten. Yeah, he's fighting three ten against. Uh, Smith. Smith. Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. So you have. It's it's I don't know, man. It, it's one of those things where. I thought he lost to Tiago Santos as well, who fought with two torn ACLs. Mm-hmm. I thought he lost that. I thought he lost that. That was the most boring fight I've ever seen. Let's talk John about John Jones. Not- like, what is your? Okay, I'll tell you my opinion on John Jones. At two hundred five, the guy is deadly. He can he can stand up. He can strike. Yeah. He's he's Absolutely. long, and he yeah. can wrestle, and he's strong, and he's tall. Right? Uh, he can do all. He's like a very well rounded, all around fine fighter. His fight, IQ, his fight, his fight IQ was up here. Yeah, he he, he catches understands people. distance. He yep. understands distance better than anybody, in my opinion. Yeah. Outside of the eye poking stuff, I would say like his distance management is uh no, I, I honestly think he does it like intentionally. Like he said he does it intentionally. Yeah. Oh, I never heard him say that, but I think he like says I, he does it. Oh. He's, he's, he's alluded to the fact that he does that. If I poke you, it's <laughs> it yeah, is what he, it is. He I mean, you know, the guy the guy's personality, you know, makes yeah. me not surprised, but you know, yeah. John Jones, he's he's awesome, man. He he understands distance really well. Um, and it's just crazy. Like in the clinch, he he can tear you up with elbows, which is something that's not easy to do. Because yeah. w- to to take your arm out of a clinch and to hit somebody is essentially making yourself vulnerable to a takedown, um, or getting struck yourself. So the fact that he can pull off elbows in the clinch is 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 outstanding, and I love to watch him do it. But at heavyweight, he looks fat. He looks sloppy. He he when he was walking up to Cyril Gunn, like honestly, he he I don't know. He looked like fucking Cormier, just a tall version of Cormier. To be honest, it, it did not <laughs> look good. And oh, and he just t- took him down and just laid on top of him. No technique whatsoever. Cyril Gunn made zero effort to get up. He just gave up. He's soft. He's a little bitch sometimes. But that John Jones is not the 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 goat john jones that we all you know grew to love i i I don't like this narrative that's being painted as john jones as a heavyweight champ because he honestly like i'm not i don't think he's gonna deserve the credit that the history books are gonna give him right we're living in the moment we can see it we understand it as fans and as people who know the sport but later on down the road you're gonna look at me oh john jones he was a heavyweight champ People are not going to really remember that. I think there should be an asterisk ne- ne- next to it, man. I-, I I don't like it. I'm a fan of John Jones, but I don't like this this facade that that's being put on right now for the history books in the future. Uh, what are your I, thoughts? I, I think it's I think it's similar to when people you know when, like when people say, for example, Shohei Otani got hurt in the World Series. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, as a Yankees fan, I was like, okay, well, that helps the Yankees have a better chance to win. Um, and I had people saying, well, don't you want them at their best? I said, well, yeah, in theory, but who the hell would remember that in 20 years? Nobody. Exactly. Exactly. And not to, me- not to mention, the Yankees are not fully stacked because they had guys that were injured as well. Would you want to face the Yankees at their best? And what at their best, meaning when they're hitting like, like they hit, you got them at a time where they don't, they weren't hitting which had nothing to do with the Dodgers because it was going on for the, the two series before that. They were not hitting the ball very well. So what did you want to face them when they're hitting at their best and say, okay, I beat them at their best? No, you want to beat them when they're not hitting the ball. If you got yeah. Judge when he's when he's hitting 380 and smashing the ball, well, that series might be different. So I, I and remember, I mean, like, does anyone remember that Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson got hurt for Golden State? Mm-hmm. That's why Toronto hoisted a trophy. Like no one, no one cares. Exactly. So, yeah, Nobody like remembers said, in, in 20 years, yeah. in 20 years, they'll say, oh, yeah, John. Oh, my God. John Jones. Like they won't remember that he didn't have to fight anyone to get a title shot. Mm-hmm. They won't remember that he didn't fight. The fight that I think we didn't didn't get that really bothered me was John Jones and Cormier at heavyweight. 
Yep. That mm-hmm. was a fight that I wanted to see. I wanted to see John Jones show me what he's got against Cormier in his natural Popeye's eating chicken body <laughs> where he's not cutting weight to 205 where he looks like he's a sickly dying person, even though Cormier beat up everybody else at that weight mm-hmm. except for Jones. And I thought he was winning the second fight until he got caught. Mm-hmm. And in the first fight, the first fight, Jones won. I think that first early kick to the stomach messed was a kick to the stomach. I think he put in you know, Cormier's gut. And I was like, <laughs> like took the air out of him <laughs> like that. But again, a guy who's cut all this weight, he's not a natural 205. I mean, look, Cormier looks like he's weighing 320 right now in a suit. Yeah, the guy's fight. huge. He looks huge. <laughs> like he'd have to cut weight to make 265 right now. So yeah. I think that was a fight that we never got to truly see. That would have been the fight that I would have loved is, is what, if they had rematched again after the 205 thing and fought at heavyweight. And, and let's find out because then I would say, yo, for real. Because I thought, because Cormier was fucking Stipe up in their second fight. He was dominating that fight. and then Yeah, but Stipe hit him in the gut. gut. In the gut, he hit him in the gut. He's like, "Oh shit!" That just and it's like, I guess Cormier forgot that you should block the gut. Yeah, um, and maybe, or maybe he thought his gut was jelly, and it, it took this in the past. But Stipe hits harder to the gut, and he kept yeah. hitting him in the gut, hitting him in the gut. And next thing, you know, oh my god! And, and the third fight, Cormier shouldn't have even been fighting. If you hear the stories, he he had two fucked up discs in his back. He couldn't train. He couldn't move. And then he got stabbed in the eye, and his eye was black. Mm. Like he couldn't see out of he said I couldn't see out of the one eye for three rounds. Yeah. And yet he still fought, you know. And then of course that happened to be in the apex too, which was kind of depressing that your career ends in an empty yeah. building. Like, you know, that kind of sucks. But Jones fighting gone, gone yeah. turtled up like a bitch, and it yeah, disappointed yeah. me. Just like, bro, you have the power to hit this man and hurt this man. Yeah. And, and Gon can hit. Like, he can actually he hit. hit. Have you seen? Did he you hit. watch his fight against uh, Tai Tuivasa? Yeah, yeah. He, oh he, man, he beat his ass. Yeah, and it was like, and it makes me wonder. Did he take a dive? You think it so? makes me wonder? It makes me wonder because mm. you've never seen him look like that. And I'm sorry, but John Jones, that John Jones didn't have a stoppage. In years, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, when was John Jones' last stoppage? When was his last finish? It was the Cormier fight. And before that, you can't remember it. I can't remember the last stoppage. I'm going to go look real fast. The, the Cormier fight. And that wasn't by hands. That was by a head kick. That was no, head jo- kick. Jo- so, Jones' fights always go to go the distance. Uh, yeah, John, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Dominic Reyes' decision. Tiago Santos' decision. Anthony Smith decision. Anthony Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love Anthony Smith. First of all, he's done. I wish he'd stop fighting. Um, yeah. But he gave away the belt in 28 in 2019 because mm-hmm. he got badly fouled by John Jones with that knee. It would have been a disqualification and Anthony Smith would have been the champion. Yeah, he would have yeah. been the, he would have been the champion. And that's what kills me. What when um, who which was the fighter that lost the belt it was it was Aljo mm-hmm. who got the belt from Peter Yan. On a, on a on a on a DQ like uh, uh, that yeah, was the, Anthony the head, Smith the, the yeah, knee to yeah. the head thing yeah. yeah and then before that okay he knocked out Gustafson but then you had the uh, you know the Cormier OSP went to decision Cormier decision Glover decision Gustafson decision yeah his last like he he's he's like the decision king but you can argue that he he sort of that's his strategy right because you know um, when he fought um, Dominic Reyes. He that came alive. He came alive in the fourth and fifth round, but he did get yeah. his ass beat for the first three rounds. First three. Um, and and it seems to be John Jones's thing to where he sort of like starts off a little slow to see if he can wear his guy down, and then he mm-hmm. starts coming forward. You know, he puts his both hands up like this, and he just starts yeah. coming forward at you. Uh, so you know, maybe the the fact that his fights always go to decision is 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 his thing, but I still don't think. You know, he he earned his way to to get this status as like champ champ. You know, like he, he mm-hmm. I wish he I wish the Ngannou fight happened. To be honest, um, that would have been interesting to see. Um, 
because uh, Nganu today is not the Nganu who lost to Stipe, right? Um, the Nganu who lost to Stipe and, and, and then Derek Lewis right after. That was, you know, swinging. That was the, uh, the, the crazy Nganu. Now he's a little bit more patient. I wouldn't say he's the best wrestler in the world, but he's patient and, you know, he, he can pick his strikes. And I think if John Jones felt an uh, Nganu strike, he would have, he would, you know, reconsider his whole heavyweight, you know, spiel thing. I don't think I, I John think, Jones I, I can think eat. Anyone who, I think anyone feels <laughs> that strike, they're reconsidering their life decisions. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think John Jones can eat multiple Nganu strikes, you know, because um, Dominic Reyes had him hurt off some yeah. punches. Now imagine Nganu, who another one has to cut weight to meet. 265 because the guy is just so fucking massive and mind you this isn't fat the guy is fucking oh, walking muscle. brick of brick. muscle um, yeah so you know it's these little things that that just kind of piss me off um about the whole john jones thing um like you well, he like wasted, you he I'm wasted gonna, he wasted so many years of his life yeah um doing what i don't know but like you i'm gonna watch it uh, I don't expect Steve to be good at all. He was doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that and, and this. <laughs> and, beating up his, and beating up his wife. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't expect it to be an exciting fight. Um, I expect Steve to look exhausted, tired, and just slow. Um, his last fight against Nganu, the, the one that he lost, he, he just he looked horrible. Um, he was sluggish. He was flat-footed the whole time. Um, and you can just hear in the way he was talking. He was just like, ah, whatever. You know how he talks. He talks like some blue collar dude. Um, I think this is just a payday for him. This is just a payday for Stipe. He ain't taking this shit seriously. And uh, he's just being fed to John Jones at this point. And it's it's doing the fans a disservice. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. How, how, how much, how seriously do you think John Jones takes this fight? John Jones is, is probably training. I mean, I hate to use Instagram as, as a way to determine who's training or not, but he, you know, he posts uh, every now and then uh, about not, uh, more frequently than he did with Cyril Gaon. When he was about to fight Cyril Gaon, he was posting videos of him and his dog doing like tactical shooting training. Like, what the fuck? John Jones didn't take that shit serious at all. Now you got him posting videos of him in the gym, you know, lifting weights, talking about I'm feeling good, I'm hitting PRs on the weights, blah, blah, blah. Like, I know he's training, um, but, like, I don't think this is going to challenge him very much. Um, Stipe, how old is Stipe? He's 40-something? No? He's 42 or 43. Let me look it up real fast. Because, yeah, I mean, that's, that was my whole thing with this thing. This thing is, like, just it's a joke. He's, he's 42. He's, 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 he's 42. He's 42. He hasn't fought in four years. John Jones is what, 38, 37? He's getting there. I think he's like 37 now. 37. Guess who's 37 and clearing out a division? Alex Pereira. (laughs) So John Jones technically is not that old. And you know for heavyweights, right? Like for heavyweights, like the age is a little bit higher. So, man, I I don't know. But the the other fights on the card could be a little interesting. with for 309 we've got i like the the olivera versus chandler um i think chandler, that's a fun i think that's a fun fight chandler's gonna go out swinging olivera may take him to the ground and choke him out but i think the first few rounds will be uh pretty interesting because olivera can strike too he's not afraid well we know that olivera is an expert in getting dropped yes we know that. he's an <laughs> expert in getting dropped the thing is if, if you drop him he almost invites you into that territory yeah. to come. And I went to the fight in Houston went with Oliveira mm-hmm. and Chandler, and Chandler dropped him. And the first thing you're saying is he goes down the go ground. He jumps into his guard. You're like, what the hell yeah. are you doing? Like, yeah. what are you doing? And he did that. And you're like, you needed to tell his ass, get your ass back up. We're going to do this again. And I'm going to sleep your ass. And and I think that Chandler, I, and I like Michael Chandler. Um, I think he gets a bum rap. I mean, this guy hasn't had an easy fight in the UFC. He hasn't no, had yeah, a, yeah. A, 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 a plate of, of ice cream. You know, he's had <laughs> Dan Hooker. He's had Oliveira. He's had Dustin Poirier. He's yeah. had you know, Justin Gaethje. Like, 
who else did he, he fought? I mean, yeah, okay, his ice cream was Tony Ferguson. Um, like, but overall, like, he hasn't been given like gifts. Yeah. And yet these guys talk a lot of shit about him, but there is this one thing you're guaranteed with a Michael Chandler fight. He's going to come out there and give you something exciting. You're not going to be bored. He's a wrestler who doesn't wrestle, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and, and it's, and he has heavy hands. I, and the crazy thing is I used to watch him train at Jocko um, mm. Black Zillions years ago. And you watch him train. He's a maniac. Like, he trains his ass off. He's a he's a brick. He probably probably should be fighting at seventy because he's got no body fat. He I think the, the guy's five. juicing. <laughs> I'm be honest. No, no, no. Like uh, all jokes aside, I think he's allegedly based off, based off of not. I never even heard any rumors. I'm just watching. Like as a fighter, I watch his the way he trains and his body. Like. He is like a walking brick, like you said, but he has a little bit of that like steroid gut. You know, he's got a, a belly, but he has abs. Okay. It's really weird. And and yeah. you know, when you have a belly and abs like that, that's like a telltale sign of like somebody that's that's juicy. Let me ask you, do you think most of these guys at some point have done a little something? Uh you know, like I would say once the guys are a little bit older in age, you know, I think they they, they I mean, because basically little... that's what TR TRT is basically steroids. Yeah, well, it's yeah. not steroids. It's not. It's not. Hey, before I have anyone come out here and say, "Oh, TRT is not steroids," there's a reason they banned it. Yeah, there's I mean, if you look it. at look at Vitor pre TRT pre, and Vitor pre TRT and Vitor post TRT, <laughs> yeah. he's a yeah. fucking walking Godzilla <laughs> pre TRT yeah. with, with TRT, and he looked like an old man, you know, yeah. after TRT. That's what I'm talking about. It's like there's TRT has a major impact. Go ask Michael Bisping about what happened with Vitor Belfort on T- TRT. Like, yeah, like, exactly, exactly. And, 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 I mean, Chael Sonnen's flat out said, beyond the fact that Chael Sonnen said he did every steroid in the book, he was on TRT all the time. Dan Henderson was on TRT. All these yeah. dudes. I mean, everyone's got this testosterone replacement therapy thing going on. And, and, and other stuff, too. Um, Khalil Roundtree, yeah. uh, he was taking uh, DHEA, which is another, um, like, testosterone like you know i'm not a doctor but i think it's yeah. a chemical that can help stimulate the production of testosterone in your body um mm. and that's what he got dinged for um before the the jamal oh, jamal, fight. jamal hill fight yeah. yeah uh so you know these guys may they, they they may not be taking straight up steroids but they probably have something in a cocktail that you know like you know can stimulate you know uh hormones or whatever and and uh, yeah, so I don't think the the sport is as clean as they try to no, make it. No, seem. <laughs> there's a reason. They, there's a reason they got rid of USADA. Yeah, yeah. And have their have own this. testing. They have their own testing going on, and, and and I mean, there's a reason for it. We all know because there were too many fighters getting hit with this stuff. And then on yeah. top of that, I also look. Technology is technology. Do you think that people stopped trying to make designer steroids like Barry Bonds was on? And all yeah. these baseball players were on, in, you know, 20 years ago of, uh, that they couldn't detect. So they they now detect it. So now we're going to find the next one we can make. Exactly. Exactly. So here's the newest exactly. undetectable steroid that a, mm-hmm. that a chemist has put together, a doctor's put together, and is selling to athletes for gazillions of dollars. Like, let's – like, like, people are naive. People Let me are tell naive. you something. These are, these are pro athletes. They will do exactly. anything that they can to get the edge. They want the edge. And there's a reason that these guys in the Olympics and the sprints, they're, they're going to take anything that they can, and they'll risk it to win a gold medal. They'll risk it for the millions of dollars that will come with, with winning that gold medal. Like, there's a reason. Like, you you hope maybe that you pissed it out of your system in time, or or but that they made a cl- one that's undetectable. For, like, I, I believe that they'll do anything possible to win. And I have no, and I have no problem with it. Honestly. Yeah, I wish they would just be open about it, too, you know, because I can understand, you know, the concern is like, oh, you know, you're making it unfair. But look, all of these guys have access to that stuff, right? All yeah. the top contenders have access to these doctors and, and these medicines. All of them have personal chefs. So it's not really creating an imbalance in the sport um, mm-hmm. as people try and make it seem like it is. But 
I wanted to touch up on that whole uh, argument of like, you know, just the testosterone and shit. Like to go through a fight camp is grueling. I mean, yeah. you're talking minimal sleep, training twice, sometimes three times a day um, with minimal why sleep. Is there a min- why is there minimal sleep? Because isn't sleep the most important thing? It is. It is. It's the most important thing. But some guys, you know, like after training all day long, they want to go bang their wives, you know, like they, they want to go <laughs> do, do other stuff. And then, yeah. you know, there's only so many hours in the day. And to wake yeah. up in the morning and go run six miles, it, it, it's your body needs to recover with sleep. And when you can't recover with sleep, you supplement that with, you know, additional testosterone because that's what it does people think like oh the 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 steroids help you just bulk up no honestly all it does is makes your recovery quicker so because you're recovering quicker you're working out more and hence you just you know you balloon up the way that you balloon so like the 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 business that they're in where they have to put their you know their bodies on the line consistently over and over and over again for a period of six to eight weeks like their body is going to break down without help. That's just, you know, that's just the, the reality of it. So are these guys taking shit? I think so. Um, do I judge them for it? Fuck no. Like, honestly, like, it would be impossible to, to compete at the level that they compete at the frequency that they do without help. It's, 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 it's ridiculous that nobody just, like, comes, comes is, that they're not upfront about it. <laughs> Let me ask you this final question before we jump off here. Yeah. When when you, if if everyone knows about it, are you okay with it? Because I think the one thing when it comes to fighting or boxing is you can be really physically damaged. <laughs> yeah, I.e., yeah. Michael Bisping has lost an eye because of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that even more reason that like, look, man, this is not baseball. This isn't football. This isn't basketball. This isn't some non. Even football as a physical contact sport, it's not this. Yeah. You're not really risking your, I mean, in theory, you're not risking your life to play football, but people might say, oh, I'm giving, putting my life in line. No, no, you're not. You're, you're playing football. Yeah. Are there injuries possibly? Yes. Do people die on the football field? Knock on wood, we know we had the DeMar Hamlin situation, which was a fluke situation in which he got hit at the exact time of which his heart was in the middle of a beat. And, and that's what every report said, that if he could, to have that hit a thousand times, that would that would you know, or a million times, it would happen one time. What happened? These guys do are literally putting their lives on the line. They're being hit in the face. They're mm-hmm. you have boxers who have gone into comas after a boxing match and died. Mm-hmm. Um, you've had MMA fighters die in the in a cage. Is that a reason why you have to be more vigilant about dealing with this type of thing and not allowing them to do it because? Or, or better yet, have a cutoff time. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you can't do this shit within. How long mm-hmm. does steroids last in your system? Three. I don't know. We say, let's say, three weeks before the fight, you cannot be on this shit anymore. Yeah, but before I think we, that that can that can cause some like serious other medical problems. like problems. You know, I'm and again, I'm not here to say everybody's on fucking steroids or juicing or whatever. But yeah. I do, I do think there are people who get away with it. And to your point, like. In the fight game, I think it's a little bit more dangerous, um, you know, when maybe there's a situation that somebody didn't use it and somebody that did is fighting them, you know, like that. Can, I mean, you you fought. You have fought. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever I mean, done steroids? Hell no. No. <laughs> no. If you I, fought a guy who was on steroids, how would you feel about it? I, I would be I would be pretty upset, you know, because like I put my body on the line during a, a fight camp and I, I worked hard, you know, of my own volition, woke up and r- ran and and went to go train and got beat up in sparring and shark tanks and shit like that, like on my own volition, you know, and then to then just go up to some guy who just waltzed up in there and then was just juiced to the gills like I that would piss me off if I was a fighter. Yeah. And then that's that's why I say. They need to just be open about it so that people can understand what's coming their way, you know, versus like have this like expectation that you're going to honorably fight me. Um, you know, and then I end up losing an eyeball or something because I fought some maniac who's road uh, roid raging, you know, like I, I think <laughs> they should just like open it and, and let it yeah. be. And, you know, wh- whoever's fighting whoever is can sort it out on their own. Like, I think it's it's a dangerous game to play 
of this like shady of like, oh, you know, taking these supplements, they may or may not pass, you know, like there's no balance there. There's no balance. And I think that's a little unfair uh, to those who may um, try to do things the right way. Well, that's going to do it for us today, folks. I greatly appreciate it, Manny. Uh, again, I had Manny Charlemagne on here with me, my fraternity brother from Five Minute Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, who's also fought in Muay Thai. He's a Muay Thai coach. I mean, you're in you're in Houston, right? Yes, I am. If you're looking for a Muay Thai coach, I mean, hey, Matt, you might want to give Manny a, a call. Um, you can, if you want to reach out to him for for Muay Thai coaching, you can always buzz me directly on Instagram, and I'll connect you with Manny. Um, but I greatly appreciate it, bro. I thank you so yeah. much for jumping on with us to talk MMA. Talk to Alex Pereira. I would yeah. love to see him do this fight. I want to see him bust Ankalaya's ass up. Um, and we'll see what happens, man. But uh, yeah, let's do it again. And let's do this again. Thank you All again. Right. Come on now.